you can see, using taxonomy to speed up your sites. Um, I know there's a lot of performance talks out there that cover a lot of the basic things like installing caching plugins, um, things you definitely shouldn't do. But dealing with clients a lot of the time in my job, I have to do a lot of code review and I have to do a lot of checks because if I don't do my job properly, then either their site gets hacked or it falls over after 100 people visit. And these tend to be newspapers that have like thousands of people visiting every second or minute and millions and millions of page views every week, no mind in a year. So I need mean, to look at things. And there's a lot of things that they do and it, can't, it would work if you're on maybe five or 10 people, but even then it doesn't work especially well. He wants a page that ideally loads in under half a second according to Google, which is easier said than done, especially when you get to certain things. So, one of the main focuses I'm going to talk about today is taxonomies and civically using them for purposes other than what people usually use them for. So, I'm going to cover actually creating them, because it's a lot easier than people think, especially for people who aren't necessarily technically inclined. Um, What's the difference between public and private taxonomies? A lot of people don't even know that private taxonomies are a thing, but we'll talk about that. Examples of how to make your sites faster, and one particular common example that a lot of people build a certain way, but I'm going to show you a much faster way to do it, um, excluding things from your homepage. Um, how to put things in like sliders and featured pages and sections in a very fast way. And Checkboxes and flags are a more general covering of the topic. So, first off, if you want to create a taxonomy, you don't need to write the code yourself. Go to this website, fill out the form, and it'll spit out a load of code at the end. Um, I don't remember the last time I typed in register underscore taxonomy or register underscore custom post type and then looked up for the codex which options I wanted. I just went to this website checked a few boxes, filled in a few text boxes saying, telling it what it was called, you know, what is it, box, and then boxes for plural, and that, and they figured out the rest for me, and then I copy pasted at the end. So this is what their website looks like, and as you can see, they do a lot of other generators as well, um, always worth a look going around, things like if you write in the plugin header and you want the comments at the top, and you don't remember what they're called, which I can never remember myself, it'll, think, it'll tell you all of those and it'll let you just write into a box. And at the end, update code, as you can see, is the top of this large chunk of code, which I'm going to copy paste into either my functions, PHP or plugin. And I don't need to worry about any of that. And so it's probably the easiest part of this, and it's probably something that a lot of people think is very complicated, but it's not really. You don't even need to understand the block. You just need to know how to copy paste into a file. So that's that out of the way. Public versus private. So most people, when they deal with taxonomies, they tend to think of things like product categories or brands or manufacturers or anything that they would organize their posts by. And private taxonomies do the same thing, but rather than having an archive page and a nice little menu on the side that you visiting my site would see, Instead, it's a private taxonomy that I might use for internal purposes behind the scenes. So this is more used for things like when you're on Blue Peter and you pull out something from underneath the table and I wish I had a cake right now. But it's useful for those kind of things or for when you, there's something that you want to do that isn't that it's quite heavy and complex, so you want to figure things out beforehand and group things behind the scenes, but they're not the kind of groups you want to show a customer. So, this is, these are the options that you would set, and these are flipped around. So, by default, taxonomies when you register them are public, unless you say otherwise. And if you say false, it will set these three other values the other way around. Um, so, a public if public is set to false, then it won't show up on the front end, it won't show up in the admin area, and you'll have this taxonomy, but you won't necessarily even know it's there just looking at user interface. And WordPress Core itself uses these internally, for example, um, if you have ever done anything with nav menus, you would probably think that's a custom post type behind the scene load of options, when actually the Menus themselves are custom taxonomy, 
and the individual items that you put in, like if I add a page in, it creates a custom post type and now for item, and then it figures out which goes in which menu based on the terms. So, and a lot of people are completely unaware of this, and it's completely hidden behind the user interface. So, again, publics have archives and templates, they show on the front end, and categories is pretty much the archetypal example. Um, this is what everybody is used to. Um, and private, nav menu, that was the name I was looking for, is very useful. And again, these are hidden and they can speed things up by being used behind the scenes and they can also be used for other stuff. You can also have private taxonomies that do have a user interface but are not on the front end of the site for internal purposes. Um, for example, let's say you have things on your site and they need to be. They need somebody to go and do them. So maybe tasks that we're going to do, and then in the admin area, you might have a private taxonomy called people, and then or you might name it um, who is this assigned to, and then tag people on individual posts. But no one outside of WP Admin is ever going to see that because it's a private taxonomy which has show UI to true and everything else set to false. So that's a practical thing that you might have rather than something to speed things up. So one thing that I generally recommend is adding a utility taxonomy. Because sometimes you have things that would be helpful to know in advance for querying purposes, but you don't want to set a whole taxonomy up for them because you know the only values in there are going to be yes and no, and that's not particularly useful. So, you might have a taxonomy that is general purpose, that you can add random markers to. So if I'm sorting through a load of documents, I might have a load of stickers and stuff, and I might you know, put a red dot on the top of things that need adjusting, and then a blue dot on these that need to go off to this department. And at the end of the day, before they're all sorted, all the stickers are peeled off anyway, but I might use it for those kind of things. Or you can like to do markers. So I'm going to register a utility taxonomy, I'm going to call it internal markers. I have set it to not be public, but I have set show UI in menu and rest to true. So I can use the rest API with it, I can change it in the admin interface, and it will show up as a menu, but it will not show up on the front end. So unless you have a login, no one will ever know this is even there. And that's all I need to do. And for the most part, you can have more than one of these taxonomies, and all you need to do is copy paste and change the word utility to something else, or change internal markers. And if you were on Frontenberg for a short while, you might have seen me testing this as internal markers showed up in the sidebar. Um, but that. So, hiding posts on the home page. I'm going to use my utility taxonomy now to speed things up. But first, I'm going to go through the way that people usually do it and how I might have done it in the past. So this is the slower way, but it's the more path well trodden. So a lot of people will create a whole new query, which will be the main query modified, or they'll do it the better way where they filter. So what we have here is a post meta value, and if the post meta value is 1, then hide it from the front page. That's how most people do these things. So here we are, we're modifying. If it's the main query and it's home, then add a meta query where we're looking for hide from home page, and if it is not set to true, then show it on the front end. And this is a very expensive query. Um, expensive because it has not in, you always want to be querying for what you want. You never want to query for what you don't want because then the database has to sort of figure out, hmm, um, we have all of this stuff here and we're going to have to go through each and every single one and pick out the ones that satisfy this and then copy it all into a brand new table and then we're going to run the query that Tom wants on this brand new table, and then we're going to erase this table because we're done with it and go back to the original one. That takes a lot of time. And then on top of that, it's a meta query. Um, you have post meta and you have taxonomies, and there's a reason we don't just store taxonomies in post meta because it's slow. 
Post Meta is very fast when you already know which post you want and you just want to fetch this particular value. It's, it's built for that. It's amazingly fast in that. In fact, it's so fast that when you do a query for, for let's say, five posts, WordPress decides to go and fetch all the post meta for you in advance because it's so fast. So if you do get post meta, you don't end up with a second query to the database because it just fetched them all in bulk. Whereas if you're trying to search on that table, you're trying to figure out you don't know the post ID, but you do know the key and the value, and you're trying to figure out the reverse, it's slow, it's just, ugh. Everything just grinds to a halt, and it's just like snails moving along. You don't want that. Um, but it's very easy to implement, and it's kind of the thing that immediately comes to mind for most developers when they're doing this kind of thing. So this sort of thing is very common. And you'll end up having a meta box in the back end where you add a little checkbox or a custom field that you add and you put the number one or the word true or yes in and then you have an equivalent of this somewhere. That's slow. So the fast way is to use the internal markers and put a show on homepage tag in there. And at this point, now we have something we can query for, and we always want to be querying for what we want, not what we don't want. So rather than saying, show me all the things that don't have this post meta, instead we're, now we're asking for all of the things that do have this tab, which is orders of magnitude faster, sometimes thousands of times faster, both because we're using a taxonomy and because we're, we're looking for what we want, not what we don't want. So it also makes the query a lot quicker because it's now to write because now it's just the one line. We just say utility, show on home page, and we're off to the races, rather than the meta query, which a lot of people find quite intimidating because they've got to go to the codex and figure out which values they want. Here it is, just a single line. A lot of people use tax queries sometimes, but even then you just if you know the name of the taxonomy and the term you want. Just set one as the, the taxonomy is the key and turn as the value, and that works just fine. And this does exactly the same thing as the previous query did. So if we go back, we can, we've just swapped this, the slow query that might cause havoc on our database. And I've seen queries like this bring down servers when they're under heavy load. Uh, well, not even heavy load, just a lot of people visiting to this. Just a single line, which is quite quick. And it's the kind of query you would expect to be quite common in WordPress. But we've got a problem. So if we go back here, I've just added a tag there. And you might be thinking, well, I don't want to have to add that to every single post that I've got. That's a lot of work. What if an editor forgets? It's just, who can be asked with that? And then nobody got time for it. So why not automate the whole process? So here I have, whenever I publish a post, I set the term on that post ID so that in the utility taxonomy I have show on home page and now whenever I create a post it will automatically add it. And if I ever wanted to remove it then that post would no longer show on the home page because I'm going for what I want, not what I don't want. And if I remove that term, show on home page, then clearly I don't want it to show on the home page. So you can use a very similar process for galleries and featured areas. And it's kind of simple as well in terms of if I don't want this to show on the home page, I just click that little X there rather than having to faff around. And on top of that, I kind of forgot to mention that I didn't build that user interface. It was just handed to me on a silver platter by WordPress. So I saved myself the time of having to build a meta box and implement a checkbox and make sure that it was working okay and then test it and then figure out with things like the whole selector. I didn't have to do any of that. WordPress just handed me this. And I can add other things in there just for my own personal uses. Like maybe I really like this post and I want to do something like so I could type something in there as well. And it might have absolutely nothing to do with how my website is built or you know, maybe it's going to in the future. Who knows? I have those, I have a lot of flexibility with this. So, galleries and featured areas, you see, for example, this is the verge, they tend to have a big section at the top with like a nice little um, mosaic section with like their six top stories that they really want to push, or in this case, the single story that they really like and they want everybody to read. 
and you might also see things like on the Guardian where they have nice little sections where they have the sports bit and then a big line and then a box underneath with um, international news or here right at the very top they've picked Boris Johnson and Russia World Cup to be you know their number one story and then they you can see they've taken other posts and put them around, but they've curated that. They've figured out what's important for them on that particular day and decided, okay, we're going to do that, rather than just showing things chronologically. So there's some sort of level of importance and curation to that. And again, some people might use post meta for that. But then you have the other problem that, um, like for example here, we have Google is buying Elytra for $40 million and other sections on the TechCrunch website. And as you go down, you see they have their, um, their chronological down here, but they've hand-picked at the top. And so you might be thinking, well, okay, I'm going to write a post meta where it's like featured on homepage, and I'm going to search for that. And it'll be all great until the client comes around and says, okay, we have another section called apps, which also needs the same thing. So you go, ah, the second post meta. And then I'll have a third for gadgets and that, and then they're like, well, we want more than one. And then suddenly you're ending up implementing about 20 check boxes in this huge meta box, which goes down. And you're scrolling and scrolling, and then they say they want this and that. And you're just like, and then you've got a query for them, and the query's expensive because it's a post meta query, and it's just so much to manage. Or even if it's just a simple thing, like on the Apple website, they have a few sections here, but they had someone had to go through and pick these products and then pick the order and make sure that they go in the correct order. And then they might have other sections, maybe on the iTunes store, where they have a selection of apps right at the top, maybe the top 20 that they picked for that day, or the editor's choice. Who knows? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to register another utility taxonomy. And as you can see, this is the same code as maybe several slides back, but I've just changed utility and internal markers to featured area, and I've made no other changes. Um, but it's, it's, it's quite useful for the same reasons. So I'm going to use this, and the terms in this taxonomy are going to be the featured areas. So I have a home page featured area, uh, one for a slider, Another example of this is if you had a sliders taxonomy, you could have as many sliders as you want and you just add as many, had them as and when you needed them and then just type post that way. So I have a top headline section and this is how I would do that. And then when I'm in my back end area, I would just type top headlines in and then hey presto, they appear on the home page in the top headline section. And the query is a lot simpler than a lot of other examples, and other than that, it's just standard post loop, at which point I can go to town on whatever slider or layout I want as a front-end developer, and, and you know, at that point it's just you know business as usual. But it's a much simpler query as well. So, you also might notice that um, taxonomies, they have checkboxes versus tags. So, it might be that Let's say I look at my top headlines section and they, it has subsections. Well, that wouldn't necessarily work with that interface I showed you earlier with the little tags and the cross buttons. So this is where we can kind of then make use of categories versus tags in the hierarchical or non-hierarchical where you can have parents and child terms. So it might be that instead I have a top level section and that is the headlines for that. And that is some combination of the things that were flagged for the subcategories because I went through and I said, okay, I'm going to have a featured area and it's going to be the top headlines. And then let's say for the morning and the afternoon, I have top headlines for that. And this top headlines is for the whole day. I can do that by just putting things in the subcategories and then it shows up in the pair of categories automatically. Or in this case, featured areas. <clears throat> so, I can just set that by setting hierarchical to true or false. And I can change this in the future or not. It doesn't really make much difference once it's live. So, this is what that looks like using my first example of show on homepage. And this is also useful if you have editors and they don't know what the areas are called, if you want to use the left option. 
it will just show them the list, and if you want to use the write option, it will auto complete as they type. As they type. Sorry. I'm using Gutenberg as well for these examples, but it works perfectly fine in the classic editor as well. So, as a recap, I covered generating taxonomies. There's a website for that, it's very handy. You don't need to write the code, it's just copy paste and a few options. <laughs> um, there's a difference between public and private taxonomies. A lot of people only use public and don't know about private taxonomies. You can make sites faster by specifying what it is that you're looking for rather than what you don't want to look for and setting it as a tag. It makes things like putting posts in a certain place or finding posts or removing things much easier, especially if you have a hook that automatically sets a term. You can change it between categories and tags and that will give you some control over the user interface that you get. And Anton, no. So I work at Automatic and do a lot of code review per day. I focus on performance and security and do a lot of community projects. And I work at VIP. We're hiring. So have a talk to me later if you're interested. And does anybody have any questions? Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I will make one comment first, which I kind of realized while I was sat down early and didn't want to edit my slides. So this is all great when you have a brand new website and you're doing things, but a lot of people already have websites that they're maintaining over the long term, especially websites even just for my own website, I might want to make that faster. And I already have all this stuff stored in PostMeta, um, for which, how do I move all of this stuff over? Like, it's no good me telling you all this stuff if you already have 10,000 posts. And then you do this and you're like, oh, well, I didn't add this show on homepage term to the 10,000 posts early and now I only have five posts in the front page. Um, there are two, two alternatives to that. First, just because you're storing it in post meta doesn't mean you need to move it to terms. You can cock it. So you can add all of this stuff and not use it on the premise that, let's say, in a month or two's time, once you've got enough stuff to show on the homepage using that mechanism, you can do that. And that's good for things going forward. You can also make it so that you have a WPCLI command, which you run a single time, which queries for all of the posts that have the post meta, goes through maybe them, goes through them in maybe batches of 50 or 100, and adds the term and then removes the post meta, and then you just keep running it until it says there's nothing left. And I know not everybody can do that on their website because they don't have the necessary access, but in those situations, a good way of doing that is to set it up locally, pull all your data down, do it on your own computer, because you can do anything you want on your own computer, and then pull it back up. So I could run a CLI command on my own website because it's a VPS and I have all that access, but if I was dealing with a shared hosting website, something that was maybe a pound a month of that, and I just wanted it to run fast, and I wasn't worried about traffic, I just wanted everything to load in like half a second rather than 10 or 20 seconds, I can download everything, run it on this computer, and then send it back up, almost as if I was doing a migration, only I'm migrating to myself, so I don't need to change your so That's another option. I'm sure there are some other things you can do, but I'd rather you told me that. Um, so questions? Quite literally read my mind, because my, as I was sitting there, I was thinking about something I've had in PostMeta going, how will I migrate it? So you, I don't know, you clearly just got some little link, because you've just asked my first question. Um, if you were doing something like that though, so you, like you mentioned, you'd say running a custom uh, CLI command, mm -hmm. would, you have to, would you have to configure that yourself? Like you could write your own function or something to actually write the migration where you query the post meta and then insert it into your. So you'd still got to do that legwork yourself, obviously, right? Yeah, so you There's have. No tools to migrate data that, out, that exist in the wild already. So you have some advantages in that these, if you all went away and wrote a command yourself, they would all look about 95% yeah. similar. Um, it's basically you have a loop that goes around and off the query. And inside the loop, you're just like, okay, grab the post meta, set the term, remove the post meta, next. And 
those specifics of which post meta that will depend on what you want to call your taxonomy, what you want to call the tags, what you're using the tags for, but it's the same kind of pattern. Um, the query itself, you can probably just take straight from your front-end website because you've already written that query because you wanted to fetch those posts in the first place. So if I go back and I had the original show on homepage and I wanted to use that on my front end, but I needed to write a CLI command. Well, I've already written the command to fetch all of them yeah. here, and it's been running on my site for a while on all my existing data. So I would take that query, put it in my CLI command, and then use that function there to set it. So all of the building blocks are already there on your site because you built them when you built the site. We're just adding a few extra bits, and then there's this one throwaway command which you'll run once, and then you're done with it. You never need to touch it again. Let me go back to my uh, questions page. You answer all my questions. Yeah. 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 Actually, if you went back a few bits when you went to the, because uh, I was wondering, how do you tell somebody you know you don't want it on? You know, you, you pre-filled in the show on homepage tag, mm -hmm. which if you when you when somebody publishes, you realize, oh crap, I didn't want to do that. So I was obviously thinking the more protected version you're consciously adding. So, um, can, so obviously your last examples where you have check boxes. Is that right? Is that the way to do it? So the hierarchical. That makes it clearer yeah. for the user interface point, but yeah. at this point it's literally just the Chrome user interface mm. on top of the data. Yeah, that's fine. Um, as long as the data is there that you can query on, that's fine. You could re-implement, you could say, I don't want to show that interface, I want to build my own in a meta box, which is what everybody's doing when they use PostMeta in any way. And you have that option that hasn't gone away. It's just easier to use the stuff that Core yeah. gives you. Um, but the another question related to that is, because you have the underscores there, you know, that's a very technical look to it. Mm -hmm. Can you use spaces and stuff to make it more user-friendly to that term in internal markers? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Um, for the purposes of just examples, I just set the slogan, the term name, to so exactly the same. But you could go in and uh, change under the settings. Because if I go back to, I've set that to public to false, but show UI is true. And on one of those things, it's not just going to show the little box in the sidebar. It's also going to show underneath, like when you see the main categories and the main tags page under post, and you can see them all listed, you get the same interface, unless you've turned it off, but you can turn it back on to change things. But you can go in and edit it, and you can say, okay, well, this is the slug, but I'm going to add a description, and I'm going to add a title, and you might want to add other things as well. I don't know, it's your website, so, you know, however you want to use it, but those are still options. Okay. So from so, a client point of view, because obviously, You'd like to say it in a, you know, without it, with the not slow version, it would look more professional. You know, yeah. to say it. But okay, that's, that's good. Thank you. So, another option you could do is um, so here I've got a term which says show on the home page. And then I have this hook which, whenever you publish a post, it adds show on home page to all new posts. And I could add another hook which says, okay, if show on home page has been removed, as don't show on home page. And I wouldn't want to query for those unless I wanted to show a list of the posts that you don't want to show because they might be like, okay, why isn't this post showing on the home page? Did I remove that? Okay, what's hidden from the home page? That would be the situation you want you to do. You never say, show me all posts that don't have this term. You'd instead have either, you'd, as I said before, you want to query for what you want. So, and sometimes for other reasons, I can't think of right now because my mind is going blank, you might want to have an A, either or situation where you either have one term or the other term, so that when you want this, you query for this, but when you don't want this, you query for that. And that's how you would get around that in those situations. But as a rule of thumb, if you ever have to write the words not, in, in a, in a WP query, you, you're going down a very slippery path. It's not going to end well. But there are ways around it. Any other questions, please? Sorry, yes. what kind of speed factor are we talking about in terms of, let's say, a few thousand posts or whatever? So, the problem with post meta query posts is that they are slow, but the way that they get slower is dependent. A, on the traffic and the server, and B, on the amount of posts you have. 
So it's not a linear progression that if you double the number of posts, it will get twice as slow. Instead, it kind of goes a bit like this because the work that the query has to do every time you query it gets exponentially larger. So for example, um, the taxonomy tables are built for finding things. Um, let's say I want all X with Y. Anytime you have that kind of situation, use the taxonomy. So if I'm looking for a category, it knows based on the tables where to look because it, it's been told in advance by core developers that their indexes were going to be looking for these kinds of things. But the post meta table doesn't have that, so it has to build a new table every time. And if you have five posts, you know, it's a bit it's slow, but it's not amazingly slow because it's only five posts in the table. But if I told you I'm going to copy all of your tables over and then do a calculation as I'm copying them and then copying them back and destroy, you're probably going to think that's quite a lot of work. So when you see people implementing table upgrade processes, they tend to be very cautious about speed, whereas they don't realize it's happening behind the scenes with temporary tables whenever doing a post meta query. So five posts, it'd be a bit slow, but it's not the end of the world, not too much of an issue. But a thousand posts, it's got to go through and then it's got to do the same thing. And it does the same thing if you're doing a not inquiry or if you're ordering randomly because it has to figure that out on the database and it's not very good at these things. Um, and the indexes aren't set up for that. So generally avoid it whenever you can. There are some situations where it's, you kind of have to and that's why it's in there. It's just unavoidable, maybe because you're writing a CLI command and you know it's going to be expensive but it's only going to happen once, that's kind of why it's in there or for various other reasons that you know, who mind boggles. But um, if you can't switch over to a taxonomy term, uh, then usually it's a sign that there's a trade-off you're unaware of. For example, um, let's say you're an e-commerce website and people want to be able to filter by price. Uh, let's say I only have a budget of £450 and I want to buy a new computer for my mum or that. So I'll go to, let's say, Amazon or eBuy or, or in this case, Tom's special PC purchasing company. And, okay, I don't want to spend more than 450 so I, I don't want to be showing those products, so I want to filter them out. So I might put between 200 because I don't want it to be an absolute terrible computer, and 450 and then I realized the site's been really slow, and I'm like, uh, because behind the scenes it's going, okay, show me all the posts, but they have to have a post meta with a number between this value and that value, it has to do all the calculations. Whereas instead, if I had, at the beginning, decided to set up a price taxonomy, and rather than putting each individual price as this is 2.99, this is 139 pounds, or to five pence, I instead said, this is one to five pounds, this is five to 10, this is 20 to 30, this is 30 to 50, 50 to 100, and set them up in buckets, and then put actual precise values in the post meta, then that lets me query quickly, and I have a little bit of a trade-off, but I still have that precision for when I need it. I kind of rambled a little bit, sorry. So, so I'm presuming most of those um, custom field systems are probably using meta, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, usually um, <laughs> a, a, a lot of a lot of people find it quite easy, especially with things like ACF and that. It's very easy because it's by default, and then once they've because the, you know you're going through and you're saying, okay, this needs that, 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 and that, and the client will need this and this and this, and they're all saved as meta by default. And then it's usually after the fact that you've set that up, you're going through the template and like, okay, I need to show all the things with X and all the things with Y, and you're like, oh well. You don't realize that then you have to do a load of meta queries. Um, or you do and you realize the hard way and then you go, oh, <laughs> yeah. I've got 11 million posts for meta rows. And you're not really pushed in the direction of tax on yeah. the is, well, is that a conscious thing? Mm -hmm. Or because I'm, I'm very curious, it's going to be my next question. A lot of people aren't that aware of it yeah. or it hasn't been pushed in because if you hear about performance, it's yeah. actually front end performance yeah. or, you know, don't mind Bitcoin on every page or write front end or, you know, don't. don't do a thousand queries and have a hundred plugins. So it is possible with ACF to use taxonomy, but you have to tell it to. Yeah. And it's the same with a lot of other frameworks that do these things. So I'm being told them out of time. We're all, we're, we're, I think we've got a couple of more minutes just because the next day you're not going to have to be in four past. So we're, we're okay. okay.
Does any more questions? We have time for another couple. Can I, can I ask you about your query? You had WP query where you did the feature host one. Was that the uh, full query? Because I was just this, I didn't recognize the syntax. Um, that this one, one is it missing something? I just no, <laughs> the, the reason I don't understand it. No. Okay, so <laughs> there's a few few changes here. Um, I like using just the letter Q, yeah. but um, instead of writing the full array, I use PHP 7 syntax. Okay, okay. Um, so uh -huh. hence the square brackets. Um, a lot of the other options there are basically pulling in from the default. So I could I could speed this up a little bit further, but that would be a, a talk about using WP query. So for example, if I tell it that I'm not bothered about sticky posts, it won't bother trying to figure that out. If I tell it that I want posts uh, that are published, it won't try and figure out which posts are private and can I see them or not and show those. It will just show me published posts, which saves some more. If I set the author I want, that saves a little bit of time as well. Or if I say, um, oh, what was the other one? There's another one I'm forgetting. The post type, that helps as well. Mm -hmm. So any kind of hints you can give to WP Query about what you want, even if it's set as a default, usually it's best to give it anyway sure. just to be sure. And it saves a little bit of thinking time because you want to do as much of that kind of thinking on the PHP side and not have your database doing it because you've got a whole PHP process to that user doing that request but there's only one database server and one process doing its work and you want it to do as little as possible. So one of the things that I saw not long ago in the make Slack was someone who was trying to fetch stuff in the plugin repo and they were using the REST API and they wanted to be nice, they wanted to be a, a friendly API user and only request what they needed. And in theory that sounds <coughs> nice because you know, you're know you saving bandwidth, but we have tons of bandwidth these days. It's CPU and memory that's the problem. So the difference between them fetching just the two or three fields they want and getting a standard response is with the standard response, again, I go and get fetch cake under here and say, here you go, I have, I've been requested this a thousand times in the last ten minutes, I've prepared it in advance. Whereas the other one where they're like, okay, here you go, oh, but you don't want this icing and I'm going to take two of the candles off from here and you only want it on a small place, here you go, in the meantime, a hundred other people are doing the same thing and well, my hands are full, can you wait a little while, I've got a queue. So it's the same with the database. You could fetch, you know, the entire post object or you could fetch little bits, but if you've got any kind of stuff like an object cache, it's just easier to fetch the whole thing and then use something like WP list plot to fetch what on PHP. It's the same with stuff like random and that. I find that it's easier to pick a date and then pick the first post after that date rather than telling it I want a random thing because it's much faster mm. when you're doing it all on PHP. Clever, actually. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff you can do that in this case. You know, by thinking a little bit in advance about how we're structuring our data because of how we want to use it, we're saving ourselves a lot of time in the future. So that decision about whether this post should be shown on the home page or not is happening when the editor clicks either A or B, rather than every single time the home page is loaded and the MySQL server has to go away and figure all of this out. And that's time that you know impacts our SEO and annoys the users and yeah. Anyway, I've rambled a bit now, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> I think it was answered, safe to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Any other questions, folks? <laughs> Speak now for Roger Peace. Three, two, one. Done. Okay, give it up. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.